The Clausius theorem states that a system exchanging heat with external reservoirs and undergoing a cyclic process, is one that ultimately returns a system to its original state. Delta Q T S U R R 0 Display style oint frac delta q t underscore sir l e q zero, where delta q display style delta q is the infinitesimal amount of heat absorbed by the system from the reservoir and t s u r r display style t underscore sir is the temperature of the external reservoir surroundings at a particular instant in time. In the special case of a reversible process, the equality holds. The reversible case is used to introduce the entropy state function. This is because in a cyclic process the variation of a state function is zero. In words, the Clausius statement states that it is impossible to construct a device whose sole effect is the transfer of heat from a cool reservoir to a hot reservoir. Equivalently, heat spontaneously flows from a hot body to a cooler one, not the other way around. The generalized inequality of Clausius d s greater than delta q t s u r r display style d s greater than frac delta q t underscore sir for an infinitesimal change in entropy S applies not only to cyclic processes, but to any process that occurs in a closed system. History The Clausius theorem is a mathematical explanation of the second law of thermodynamics. It was developed by Rudolf Clausius who intended to explain the relationship between the heat flow in a system and the entropy of the system and its surroundings. Clausius developed this in his efforts to explain entropy and define it quantitatively. In more direct terms, the theorem gives us a way to determine if a cyclical process is reversible or irreversible. The Clausius theorem provides a quantitative formula for understanding the second law. Clausius was one of the first to work on the idea of entropy and is even responsible for giving it that name. What is now known as the Clausius theorem was first published in 1862 in Clausius' sixth memoir, "...on the application of the theorem of the equivalence of transformations to interior work." Clausius sought to show a proportional relationship between entropy and the energy flow by heating delta Q into a system. In a system, this heat energy can be transformed into work, and work can be transformed into heat through a cyclical process. Clausius writes that, "...the algebraic sum of all the transformations occurring in a cyclical process can only be less than zero, or, as an extreme case, equal to nothing." In other words, the equation delta Q T equals zero Display style point frac delta Q T equals zero, with Q being energy flow into the system due to heating and T being absolute temperature of the body when that energy is absorbed, is found to be true for any process that is cyclical and reversible. Clausius then took this a step further and determined that the following relation must be found true for any cyclical process that is possible, reversible, or not. This relation is the Clausius inequality. Delta Q T S U R R zero display style point frac delta Q T underscore sir L E Q zero. Now that this is known, there must be a relation developed between the Clausius inequality and entropy. The amount of entropy S added to the system during the cycle is defined as delta. S equals delta Q T display style delta S equals point frac delta Q T. It has been determined, as stated in the second law of thermodynamics, that the entropy is a state function. It depends only upon the state that the system is in, and not what path the system took to get there. 
This is in contrast to the amount of energy added as heat Q and as work w, which may vary depending on the path. In a cyclic process, therefore, the entropy of the system at the beginning of the cycle must equal the entropy at the end of the cycle. Delta S equals zero. Display style delta S equals zero. Regardless of whether the process is reversible or irreversible, in the irreversible case, entropy will be created in the system, and more entropy must be extracted than was added. Delta S S U R R greater than zero. Display style delta S underscore sir greater than zero. In order to return the system to its original state. In the reversible case, no entropy is created and the amount of entropy added is equal to the amount extracted. If the amount of energy added by heating can be measured during the process, and the temperature can be measured during the process, the Clausius inequality can be used to determine whether the process is reversible or irreversible by carrying out the integration in the Clausius inequality. Proof The temperature that enters in the denominator of the integrand in the Clausius inequality is actually the temperature of the external reservoir with which the system exchanges heat. At each instant of the process, the system is in contact with an external reservoir. Because of the second law of thermodynamics, in each infinitesimal heat exchange process between the system and the reservoir, the net change in entropy of the universe so to say is d s t o t a l equals d s s y s plus d s r e s 0 Display style ds underscore total equals ds underscore s ys plus ds underscore res geq zero. When the system takes in heat by an infinitesimal amount, delta q one display style delta q underscore one zero display style geq zero for the net change in entropy d s T O T A L one display style ds underscore total underscore one. In this step, to be positive, the temperature of the hot reservoir T H O T display style T underscore hot needs to be slightly greater than the temperature of the system at that instant. If the temperature of the system is given by T one display style T underscore one at that instant, then D S S Y S one equals delta Q one T one Display style ds underscore s y's underscore one equals frac delta q underscore one t underscore one and t h o t t one display style t underscore hot geq t underscore one forces us to have minus d s r E S one equals delta Q one T H O T delta Q one T one equals D S S Y S one 
Display style ds underscore res underscore one equals frac delta q underscore one t underscore hot leq frac delta q underscore one t underscore one equals ds underscore s y's underscore one. This means the magnitude of the entropy loss from the reservoir d s r e s one equals delta q 1 t h o t display style ds underscore res underscore 1 equals frac delta q underscore 1 t underscore hot is less than the magnitude of the entropy gain d s s y s 1 Display style ds underscore s y's underscore one zero display style geq zero by the system. Similarly, when the system at temperature t two display style t underscore two expels heat in magnitude minus delta q two Display style delta q underscore two delta q two zero display style delta q underscore two leq zero into a colder reservoir at temperature T C O L D T two Display style T underscore cold LEQ T underscore two in an infinitesimal step, then again, for the second law of thermodynamics to hold, we would have, in an exactly similar manner. Here, the amount of heat absorbed by the system is given by delta Q two Display style delta Q underscore two zero Display style LEQ zero signifying that heat is transferring from the system to the reservoir with d s s y s 2 0 display style ds underscore s y's underscore 2 leq 0 the magnitude of the entropy gained by the reservoir d s r e s Two equals delta q two t c o l d display style ds underscore res underscore two equals frac delta q underscore two t underscore cold is greater than the magnitude of the entropy loss of the system d s s Y S two display style ds underscore s y's underscore two. Since the total change in entropy for the system is zero in a cyclic process, if we add all the infinitesimal steps of heat intake and heat expulsion from the reservoir, signified by the previous two equations, with the temperature of the reservoir at each instant given by T S U R R display style t underscore sir we would have minus d s r e s equals delta q t s u r r d s s y S equals zero. Display style oint ds underscore res equals oint frac delta q t underscore sir leq oint ds underscore s y's equals zero. In particular, delta q t s u r r zero. Display style point frac delta q t underscore sir leq zero 
Hence, we proved the Clausius theorem. We summarize the following, the inequality in the third statement below, being obviously guaranteed by the second law of thermodynamics, which is the basis of our calculation d s r e s 0 Display style oint ds underscore res geq zero d s s y s equals zero. Display style oint ds underscore s y's equals zero. As hypothesized, d s t o t a L equals D S R E S plus D S S Y S zero Display style oint ds underscore total equals oint ds underscore res plus oint ds underscore s y's g e q zero for a reversible cyclic process, there is no generation of entropy in each of the infinitesimal heat transfer processes, and thus we would have the equality delta Q R E V T equals zero. Display style point frac delta Q underscore rev T equals zero. Thus, the Clausius inequality is a consequence of applying the second law of thermodynamics at each infinitesimal stage of heat transfer, and is thus in a sense a weaker condition than the second law itself. See also Kelvin-Planck statement Carnot's theorem thermodynamics, Carnot heat engine Introduction to Entropy <laughs>